Hi. So we've got Celsius and Fahrenheit as the two most common temperature systems. And in this video, I'm gonna try arguing why a third one, Kelvin, is actually the best for not just scientific use, but also practical everyday use for ordinary citizens. Now this doesn't mean I believe it, it's just like a fun exercise to like debate, uh, not debate, but you know, argue for points that I guess are a little um, unconventional. As a refresher, Kelvin is the same as Celsius, but plus 273.15 degrees. This makes it so absolute zero, which is the coldest temperature ever, corresponds to zero Kelvin. That's where there's no thermal energy. So it's important to first explain why most of the caveats people criticize Kelvin for are not that bad, and then I'll describe some possible benefits to Kelvin that most people don't realize. So I'll just get started. The main problem with Kelvin is that almost every temperature that the average person deals with on a day-to-day -day basis is up at like 300 Kelvin, which is about a little above freezing point. So a cold, sum a cold winter day might be like 270 Kelvin, and a hot summer day might be like 320 Kelvin. And those are big numbers, and you'd think that's super inconvenient for a human to deal with since people don't like math. But I don't think that's enough justification for moving the zero line arbitrarily up to 273 degrees. I mean, it's not really arbitrary because that's the freezing point of water, but I mean, it's still kind of arbitrary. But here's why, and I'm going to use an analogy. Let's go with height, which just, okay, I'm going to use the imperial system just because that's what I'm used to, but the analogy still works if you use metric. So I am 5 foot 11 inches tall. All my friends are between maybe 5 foot 1 inches tall and 6 foot 4 inches tall, something like that. Um, now there are very few humans shorter than 4 feet. So every time you every time you hear a human announce their height, they're gonna say like 5 foot something, like 90% of the time. Does that mean we should shift the zero mark for measuring human height to about 5 foot 6? and say like, if I'm five foot six, I am zero inches tall, and if I'm five foot three, I'm negative three inches tall, and me, right now, being five foot 11, is five inches tall? No, that doesn't make sense, because there's like an intrinsic meaning to what a foot and what an inch is, and like, you can actually measure that on my body, so like, four foot, five foot, five foot six, five foot 11, that just makes a lot of sense. Um, and another analogy is years, okay? If you think about like every year, or 99% of the years you talk about, they're all 1900s or 2000s years. I was born in 1997. This current year is 2017. Because humans don't like big numbers, does that mean we should shift the zero scale, like calibrate it so that zero is around like 2000 so that we never have to deal with big numbers? You can see where this is going, right? The thing is, humans are fine with four-digit numbers. We say 1997 all the time, no problem. So I don't really think the argument like, oh, I'm scared of big numbers, let's, let's change everything so it's smaller is a good argument because we deal with it all the time just fine. Think about all those Facebook posts that are like an image trying to explain why Fahrenheit's the best, and they show the four temperature scales ranging from zero to 100, and Fahrenheit, it says, zero, really cold, 100, really hot, Celsius, zero, kinda cold, 100, deathly hot, um, and then Kelvin, really cold, really cold, uh, Rankin, really cold, really cold. Well, what I was just saying previously is trying to refute that because clearly we humans are capable of dealing with numbers outside of the range of zero to 100. Like the best example is years, those are all around 2000. Um, and also like SAT scores, right? When I was doing it, it was like up to 2400, and pretty much every number someone said it was between 2000 and 2400. So who cares where zero lies? Who cares where 100 lies? Humans are smarter than that, and um, we should be focusing more on what the units actually mean. And in this case, it means temperature. It means how much the molecules are vibrating. I guess that's really the only thing I have to say. <laughs> um, calling back to the intrinsic unit of height that I mentioned earlier, how you can clearly see feet on my body, um, that exists for temperature too, because temperature is just how much thermal energy there is in an object, how much the molecules are vibrating. So if you double the amount of vibration in an object, it just makes sense that the number of degrees in the object should double. 
but that only happens if you're using Kelvin. So there's another reason you should use Kelvin. Um, so I'll just like start with a story, okay? From fifth grade, it was fifth grade. I think my mom was driving us to school in the minivan, which had a digital thermometer in the heads up display. And it said 46 degrees, which is pretty cold because it was winter. And I remember thinking to myself, hey, I remember in summer, it said 92 degrees at some point, and 46 is exactly half of 92. That means that right now in the winter, we are half as hot as we were in the summer. So there's like half as much energy and like half of everything. And whoa, I can't really think, I can't remember exactly what was going through my mind, but I was just so blown away way by how it was exactly half. But if we think about what's actually going on here, the winter time, we were actually feeling maybe 85% of the ener thermal energy as we did in the summer. So it's only a 15% drop actually, not a 50% drop. So by using this arbitrary zero limit line, we're deceiving kids into thinking that the changes in temperature are much more extreme than they actually are. So a, a much more blatant example of this is if you live somewhere cold and it's two degrees Fahrenheit, and then it drops one degree to one degree Fahrenheit. Some people will naively think, oh, it's half as hot. So that means all um, physical phenomena that are like proportional to temperature will go down 50%. But just thinking logically, it's a very small difference from two degrees Fahrenheit to one degree Fahrenheit. And that is, is like reflected by if you use Kelvin, it would say something like 274 to 273.5 degrees Kelvin. And that just makes a lot more sense. Um, so I, I feel like I prefaced this video by making it sound like I had a list of points to go through, but like that was really the only one. Um, I think I got through everything I wanted to say. And again, I don't actually believe that we should switch to Kelvin. I mean, it's just super inconvenient to change a society that has grown up with one temperature system to switch. And I think the effort of switching itself is not worth it because we all already have all the thermometers and all the technology designed for this. And also human brains, you know, they like habits. Kind of like how if you see the letter N, you'll just think of the N sound, even though that's completely arbitrary. A computer would not make that association. And a human who had never seen this association wouldn't understand where that came about. But anyway, um, let's not actually switch to Kelvin. This is just like a thought experiment. And that's it for this video. <sighs> okay.